Adin Kotamma, my dear Lord. Was all family and friends welcome to the woke nation, our nation of factual truth, where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear, without favor, and without faint. Here we encourage us to live our lives and live it well through the knowledge of factual truth because it is our life. And personally, I'm encouraging you to enjoy your life. Let no one rob you the joy of living your life. You were not born to live another's life but yours. So don't let anyone manipulate you, coerce you, you know, lure you or deceive you into living the life that is not yours. You were born to live your life. So live it. Uh, today I'm sharing what I titled uh, a married woman as I promised during my in my last um, video broker live broadcast so as I will speak about married woman a married woman married women so if you have any woman that is married and they, they believe the Bible is the word of God for them they believe in God they believe in Jesus and they believe that marriage is the institution of their God. You know, invite them or you can share this with them. Anyone that you know is a Christian woman, is a Muslim woman, is a Jewish woman that so much believe in the Bible, in the Quran, in the Torah. I want you to share this with them, invite them. Okay, because we need women to know what they are into before they run their mouth and they be like uh, you are sexy uh, you anti-woman you are degrading woman you are putting woman down you know <laughs> check those people that are accusing you or accusing us of uh, degrading woman or respecting women they are the one that is actually enslaving women go to their family you will see those that get upset why are you showing those naked pictures go and see how they are treating women they want women to be slaves to them and anything other than that drives them crazy so i will use the bible i will use the quran i will use the torah i mean the especially the five books of moses to open the eyes of those who are in book religion or who are claiming they are married women and they are proud of that body no same person should be proud to be a slave no proud person should be proud no no i mean no same person should be proud of being a slave so some of you that say no i'm against slavery but how can you say you're against slavery but you believe in the god of israel you believe in the jesus christ of nazareth you believe in the bible you believe in the quran you believe in the torah you believe in all these religious books that actually seal the subjugation of women and condone slavery. How can you say you're against slavery but you believe in God? What make God God is slavery. Okay, so I will start with um, Deuteronomy 25. That's where I was reading that day, right? Before I came on this. So in Deuteronomy 25, from verse 11, right? Or oh, let me let me start five to six before I go to eleven. Let me five to six first. So a married Christian woman, a married Muslim woman, especially you Christian women, because Muslim women don't behave like Christian women in marriage. At least you can see a Muslim man can marry more than one wife, but when it comes to Christian, they be like jigida, <clears throat> like. Um, Uji Amarinala, you know, like a chisel, chisel to the ground. They stand now. Ah, uh, one man, one wife. But I'm married to God. I'm married to Jesus. One man, one wife. I cannot share my man with another woman. I cannot share. But in time of need, then you want to share uh, uh, your man now with another man, right? You go to another man to provide for you, or your man will go to another person to bring money to provide for you. Yeah. Deuteronomy 
married woman, listen, okay? And those of even men too, listen, because, you know, these things, that's one of the areas they confuse us a lot. We think marriage is a natural thing, which is not, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5, he says, If brothers dwell together, if brothers dwell together, siblings dwell together, male siblings, they dwell together. This is how family used to be before marriage. And family, brothers, live together. We, we used to call it compound. Today we don't have compound anymore. What we have is individual family. Uh, your brother go out there and build. The other brother go out there and build. Before it used to be one compound. They surround themselves together. They don't even need a fence around them. They live in the same compound, you know, and all of them, their children know one another. Today, cousins are sleeping with cousins because they destroy African family structure. And many of you don't know that. So if brothers dwell together and one of them dies and has no son, the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family. You women that are fighting with your late husband uncles, late husband brothers, late husband family members, late husband kinsmen, hear what he says. If your husband is late, you must not marry a stranger outside the family of your husband, of your late husband. You must marry in that family. You say you're not, you don't want to marry anyone there, then get out, whether you have children or not. Because that's another lie they used to confuse themselves. Well, because of the children, and so what? That man came from a family. You are married to a family, not to that, not to that man. Hmm? Using your marriage, you, I'm showing you what your marriage said. He said, her husband's brother shall go into her, sleep with her, have sex with her, take her as his wife, and what? Perform the duty of a husband's brother to her. There is a duty. There is a ritual. There is also, they call it rights, right? That must be carried out. And the king's men are witnesses and no other force can change it. So all of you that say, no, not my husband. I will never marry you. Not my husband, uncle, not my father. No, it must be a man from that family. That's one of the things they do before a, a woman or a woman is given to any family. The family of the woman goes to do proper investigation to know where the daughter is going and if in case something happened, how will she be taken care of? But those things has been thrown away because they, they want marriage. I want marriage. My, me and my husband and our kids. You know, we don't want any third party. We don't want, you know. Your husband's family members are not third party to your marriage. Tell us how they married you. Didn't they come to you? All of them, they chattered their van, they chattered boss, and they were there. You think they were just there to watch you? No, that's how it used to be. But today, you are using in the name of Jesus to run away from responsibilities. Then you'll be saying it's a devil. There's somebody making you not prosper. No, you are the one that is impoverishing yourself with your silly desires and nonsense ideas you have in your head, thinking that's what it is about. Say, a husband brother shall go and take care of his wife and blah, 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 blah. And it shall be that the firstborn son which she bears will succeed the name of his dead brother. Because those of you Africans that keep claiming my name, my name is part of this foreign thing. I'm, uh, I want to marry, to have, to have children to preserve my name. It's not African thing. You came from a family, it's called family name. That is the name everyone who is connected to that family is trying to preserve, not your individual name. 
as you can change that one be to change the family name or the family have to agree to that but you know you can decide to change it today your children can decide to change their name today listen your success does not tie to your name it does not tie to your thoughts it does not tie to anything all these people saying if you have knowledge know what to do and you do it you will it will profit you no devil stopping you so the firstborn shall bear the name right that, that his name may not be blotted out of israel remember this is not africa because most of you sometimes when they talk about marriage blah 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 they think especially when it's not favoring them they begin to think oh it's african thing. no remember this is from the bible and this is talking about israel those of you that claim that god chose them see what he's saying there when you're married as a woman and your husband dies you have to remarry to his brother whether you like it or not that is how it's supposed to be in the marriage you claim to be in whether you have baby or not okay okay now verse 11 he said if two men fight together and the wife of one draws near to rescue her husband a married woman are you listening now you have the, the the feelings that somebody is attacking your husband you can see it you can experience it the man is beating your husband you know you think he's, you want to beat your husband to death and you put out your hand and seizes him by the genitals you can only do that during sex but during fight you say you're reaching out to draw genitals of the man attacking your husband he then he said then you shall cut off her hand your eye shall not pity her no pity for you a marriage woman this marriage you so that's why you are suffering don't worry about those who are pretending say, no we are not suffering well uh, come on you are lying the only time you admit yeah we are suffering is after you know you have gone abroad everybody hear about that now things are going on you guys are talking about divorce blah 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 yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, but you've been lying. You remember, like, Tonto Dike's marriage, right? She was buying all the things and claiming it's the man buying it. <laughs> and the reality buys her. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's become the crime for us to join. No, I don't cry. If I didn't enjoy when you are joining, I will not cry when you are crying, okay? So it's supposed to be balanced. <laughs> so he said, you are, I cut her hand off. A woman, a married woman who tries to rescue her husband from another man that is beating him or attacking him. He said, don't show pity to her. A dick is more important than her hand. <laughs> a man's dick is more important than your saving hand. Your hand that wants to save another life. You know, from killing them, they say they got to cut that hand. Who made a woman a savior? That's why they tell you, God is a man, is your savior. Jesus is a man, your savior. That's he, he, he. They use he for God, not she. Because God is supposed to be man. The savior is supposed to be man. But a woman that tries to save her, her, her own husband, a married woman that tries to save her own husband, her hand must be cut off. You hear that? It's not my word. It's the word of your God. How about this place? Uh, let me finish um, um, Deuteronomy. So let me go to Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy 24, go back, boom. Deuteronomy chapter 24, 1 to 4. He said, when a man takes a wife, married woman, listen, when a man takes a wife and marries her, as, as I'm reading this thing, something come up, let me say it. You married woman, you say you married as a Christian. You married maybe in a court or so, but when certain things happen, you begin to say, this is how our uh, your husband people place used to do it. Or where you are married, say, this is how our village people used to see do it. This is how we know you are confused. Because if you're married as a Christian woman, you're not supposed to be uh, quoting or trying to use any african thing to justify or to deliver yourself you're married as a christian 
So you're supposed to be so. You're married as a Muslim. You're supposed to be so. You're married as a Jew. You're supposed to be so. If you're married as an African, you don't need church marriage. You don't need court marriage or anything. Unless maybe it's like you want to travel as they made it, they will say, where is your marriage certificate? If you say you're married, a married man, a married woman can still travel as a single person without claiming, I mean, without stating they married. It's business also. Okay, so he said, when a man takes a wife and marries her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes. Nobody talks, I think, care about a woman in marriage. And because he has found some uncleanness in her, she cannot find uncleanness in the man. And he writes her a certificate of divorce, put it in her hand, and send her out of his house. When she has departed from her, like if you read it, talking about when he divorced her and she departed from his house and goes and becomes another man's wife, if he later the second husband detests her and writes uh, another certificate of divorce, put her in the hand and send her out, he said the later husband, and the, or if the later husband die, you know, who, who married her died, uh, you know, who took care of the wife that did. Her former husband, who divorced her, must not take her back to be his wife. She has been defied. For that is an abomination before the Lord. And you shall not bring sin on the land. Quit the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Hear that. So those of you that say that divorce is, a, is, a, is, is, is not allowed. Blah, blah. You say you are a Christian woman. That's why you're saying that. No, you're wrong. There's no place Bible condemned divorce. In fact, marriage comes with divorce. Divorce will deliver you from toxic marriage, will deliver you from toxic um, uh, man or who, especially woman. According to Bible, women, they don't favor women in the Bible when it comes to marriage because the woman is the slave bought by the slave master. So he said that if the, if the, if the woman marries and they begin to have sex with that other man and that man dies, he said, no, that former one will still not marry her. But the main thing I want to show you here, I say that if the man no longer find, no longer like the woman, he said, write the, the, the certificate of divorce, put it in her hand and send her back, send her packing, send her where? Out of his house. He did not even say, send her to her father's house. He said, send her out of that, throw her away. And that is what they interpreted in Malachi to be divorce. No, throwing away is different. Without marriage, uh, without divorce certificate, that marriage is still intact. If that woman or that man remarries, that's adultery. That's if it's not a polygamous family. Do you hear that? So if a, if a man, if there is certificate of divorce, yes, is valid. And that's what even their Bible says. But many of them, because the preachers who collect their tithe misinterpret Malachi, where he said that, I, the Lord, I hate divorce. No, God never said he hate divorce anywhere. The real word there is saying he, he hates being thrown away. Throwing a woman out of your house without marriage certificate, without divorce certificate, because without divorce certificate, no wise man will marry her. But with the divorce certificate, another man will freely marry her. Do you get that? So they are not telling you the truth about marriage, especially your pastors. They are not telling you the truth. Because if they tell you the truth, you will not even enter marriage like that. Unless, you know, it favors you. And if it don't favor you as a woman, you stay there, the man will determine whether you stay or go. Not today, you say, oh, I divorce, I divorce her because he's cheating on me, no? That's bullshit. You have to read the book you believe to be the word of your God. If your man see uncleanness in you, you know, you, when she want to marry you, we are packaging. But now after marriage, you remove all the um, uh, artificial stuff, all the fake stuff. Now the man is no longer, you are no longer attracted to him. He has the right to send you away, but first demand he give you the divorce certificate. With divorce certificate, you can remarry.
no, no, he don't have power over you because you are under his authority as a married woman. Remember, G Genesis chapter 3, verse 16, your desire must be from the man. He must rule over you. You married religious woman. You married God-fearing woman. You married Christian woman. You married Muslim woman, especially you Christian woman. You are the one that is causing all this problem everywhere when it comes to man and woman stuff. Okay, so um, let me read also 7 to, like if you read the 7 to 12, it's talking about um, 24, right? Mm -hmm. So, you see, when uh, like I was looking for something in a, a descent Deuteronomy, I think it's 7 to 12, you know, still talking about like um, when a man marries a woman and the, the woman is not pleasing to him. I think that place is also talking about like uh, maybe like when a, a man, like when they say their daughter and they marries, blah, 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 you know, you say if the man is not taking care of her, the man cannot divorce her and all that. Now, these things are things written in their book, but many of them are not observing it. They are not following it. They are just picking the ones they like. If you read the book of uh, Ruth about Boaz and the Ruth, you see how Boaz married her. Hmm? It's the same thing. When your husband dies, you have to remarry in that family. Then if you don't want to remarry in that family, you have to leave that family. And they have to give you certificate of divorce so that another man you know, that's a stranger can marry you. These things are simple. It's not any devil tormenting you. It's not any devil causing you or trying to rob you anything. No, these things is in your book, but you are ignoring it for whatever, maybe your selfish desire or you want to follow some movement. That's why you see Igbo, some Igbo people, let me use the word, the misguided one. They say that or in English, in English, it means the man who marries the woman is her owner or is her God, the God that owns her. The Lord that know her. That's why they tell you, Sarah, call Abraham what? My Lord. So you're supposed to be calling your husband your Lord. He is your head. He must rule over you, whether you like it or not. I hear some women today saying they are free after they get divorced. So they begin to do anyhow, do anything on social media and all that. When you do all that, you know, when he goes to your village or your town, you know, it's not like that. Don't be deceived by what they're saying on social media. Although some of them also know, have learned how to bribe the elders, even the king's men, to be dancing to their tune. Because today we are living in a community where elders are stupid. You know, anything goes. If you have money, you, you are the one they recognize. If you don't have money, remember, you, you're gone or you're done. So this is what it is. I, I read a place also, Leviticus, at Leviticus chapter 20. Let me read it. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 21. Hear what he said. He said, if a man take his brother's wife, hear now, if a man, like not that the, 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 the woman's husband is dead, but if a man takes his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. You see where I say, like, I will not sleep with my husband, brother, because your husband is still alive, not after his death. Some of you will say, okay, that thing will make someone want to kiss someone. No, it's not. It's not. You have to learn how things used to be done before these people came up. And people that don't know just agree with them because it sounds like it makes sense to them. But you have to find out the whole truth about anything they're talking about. The same way some of you believe in the lie, they tell you that your ancestors were practicing slave trade before uh, um, Arabs and Europeans came. It's never the truth. You have to know. Like some of you believe, oh, Africans are marrying multiple women. 
go and find out why they were doing it, and it was great. They were there was no incest going on. There was no somebody raping someone going on. No, because there are things they do, and those things especially was to protect women in African family structure. There was no divorce in African family structure. They may send you to your father's house, but not divorce. Not divorce. Africans weren't practicing divorce. If those of you that are older than me, or maybe witness that can testify, that they send you packing out of your husband's house doesn't mean you are divorced. It's because you did something. And the man be like, I don't want to eat her food anymore. She may poison me. And the only way a man can escape that is by her going back to her house, uh, to her father's house. She's still her wife. But you know, <laughs> and you know some men, if sometimes he, he will still go to do the, the, the need for. So he said that if this thing is uncovered, I mean, he said that if a man makes uh, takes his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. So who will make them childless? Think about that. You have seen some people that married their cousin today. They are having children. You know, there are things, you know, they just put it there for the purpose of making whatever was the agenda to hold. He said that they shall die, they shall be childless. In other words, they, will, they have to kill them. They have to kill them. So understand what, when you are bragging about what you have in God, in Christ, or in the Holy Book, you are not following it at all. Um, another place I want to read, I think, um, um, oh, Deuteronomy 22. It, it, it's a long place, but let me tell you what it says there. It's talking about when a man marries a woman and goes into her and finds out she's not a virgin and accuses her of infidelity which is unfaithfulness. This is where they claim in the New Testament about unfaithfulness. It's something that happened before marriage, not something that happened during marriage. When it happened during marriage, the place, I think um, I read it last time, right, where he said that if a man suspects his wife or maybe spirit of jealousy from God comes upon, upon, the, um, upon the man, then the man will take the woman to the priest and they will perform some ritual in the presence of God. If she's guilty, she, her belly will swell up and her thigh will rot. In other words, she cannot pro, uh, uh, conceive anymore. She will die childless. But if she's not guilty, nothing will happen to her. So understand that these things are written there, but many of you, you have picked the one because that's what you do, you cherry pick. The one that favors you, you pick it and run with it. But that's not how things goes. So it said the man accused the woman of, infant, uh, of uh, not being a virgin. He said the woman's parents will bring the proof of virginity because that's what it's supposed to be. The first night the man will sleep with the woman, the, the family members will bring white clothes upon which they will lay to have sex on. So the blood coming out of vagina will stain that cloth as evidence of, of her virginity. Then he said, if the parents of the woman fail to present the evidence of the virginity, what happens? He said, the elders of the town should take the lady to her father's house and store her to death for playing her lot. That was before she married. She was not a virgin, but pretend to be a virgin. So she married as a virgin when she was not a virgin. There's nothing wrong marrying as non-virgin. But when you hide it, when you cover it up, and the man went through, pay all she's supposed to pay to buy you as a virgin, now she find, he finds out you are not a virgin, and your parents don't have evidence. That's why they bring you to their door to stone you there because they're the one that's supposed to say, oh, we don't have this, so, so this marriage will not continue. See? You find that sometimes you say, why is that man? 
you know, going to another woman, her, her wife, his wife is so beautiful, blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh, you don't know what the man is seeing there. You know, at least you have seen some beautiful women getting divorced everywhere, right? Yeah, <laughs> it happened. So these are the things. When they come and begin to argue and all that, they've forgotten that even then they will say it in there like in Igbo people will say, Ugunwa Ibu Di Loria. Your husband is your honor, your respect, that people respect. That's why you see many women desperate to get married because, oh, Ugunwa Ibu Di if you are not married, you are, no, it's not true. You, you're not supposed to marry. Marriage is not a natural thing. Marriage is a slavery business. And many of you are arguing about that. So are you not married here? Yeah, I'm married as a Christian. If I have, if I have to marry again, I it will not be as a Christian, or as a Muslim, and it will not be marriage. I will not call it marriage. We will live together. We will agree. We are not paying anything. Say I'm buying anybody. No. So, oh, are you just going to go and take somebody's daughter? No. She's grown up. So we talk. She talked to her people. I talked to my people. We do it our way. Not the way they, they wrote it. This is how it's supposed to be. And if you don't do it, blah, blah. No. That's why you will, you will live your life freely. Enjoy your life happily without living in fear. Marriage is all about ownership by a man. The man is the owner in marriage. You can argue all you want. The man in marriage is core husband, the master, the Lord. He is the buyer and the provider. Do you hear what I just said? The man in marriage is the buyer and the provider. He buys the woman, he provides for her. So that's why I said, like, if your husband is not having sex with you, you can have it, right? You know why most women will not try to do that? Because... The moment you sleep with another man, so if you need, your husband will be like, oh, you're sleeping with others, so let them solve your problem too. So when you see the reason why some women don't want to sleep with another man, I mean married women, it's because of that. Because once the man finds out, he will wash his hand off. Oh, I'm no longer providing for you. I was providing for you because I own you. I bought you. That's why I was providing for you. Hmm. Is there when you read like First Corinthians chapter six? For those of you that say no, it's Old Testament. This is New Testament. Read First Corinthians chapter six. It's talking about being bought at a price. When you are bought at a price, your body does not, your life does not belong to you. No matter how they try to change it, is the man who bought you that is in charge that rules over you. You do whatever he wants, not whatever you want. No. That's why they try to make you to seduce them. Some of you will say, hey, you know, how about um, uh, Queen Esther? Come on, read that place very well. Vashit is saying, no. you know why? That's also, we tell you why Solomon had concubines after having 700 wives. 700 wives were all princesses. They, it's not people you can just, it's not women you can just talk to anyhow. Their father are kings and you marry them. So, you know, they want you to also sometimes. That's why they say, Solomon, come and offer sacrifice to my own God. But uh, uh, the concubines are the uh, Israelites, Israelite women. So they will go by the law, okay? Yeah, he's our concubines. So if the princesses are not giving it to her, the concubines will give it to, her, to, to him. I mean, understand that. Varsity, the man say, come and dance. No, oh, I'm not in the mood. Oh, no, that thing is like you stir the bad water. Now you model the water everywhere. All of them, they say, oh, our wife will be treating us like this also. So when you brag about Esther, he was a slave girl. That's how slaves behave. Oh, they go to get permission to kill. Permission, they lay their husband to do this, do all that. So think, think, my people, why are you you know, in, embracing something that is not enhancing your life. Just because of some, oh, I have children. You don't need to marry to have children. Because you have your sexual organs without marriage. So what makes you think nature needs you to marry before you have children? 
because you want to own children too. They are my children. I own them. Yeah, I pay the price of their mother. So the children belong to my properties. And that's why we are raising children today as slaves. Of course, that's how they want us to, to be raising them. The provider. That's why they said the Lord is, Israel is his wife. He is the husband. So he provides for them. Say, on the month of the Lord, it shall be provided. It's all about ownership. And who owns you have the, have the obligation to provide for you. That's why you see the Lord is your husband. He's my provider. But you know it's a lie. He's not your husband and he's not your provider. He's not giving you anything. That's why you pay bread price. Because you are bought. You are bought. <laughs> he paid my debt. He paid my price. That's it. He paid your price. So in becoming your husband, your provider. Marriage is a slavery business where the master buys a slave or slaves for personal gains. Marriage is not an African thing. Many of you Africans don't know it. You have to wake up. Understand that what they made you believe is not your truth. It's time for you to dare to know. Know yourself especially. You are a human being, not a creature of any God that should be controlled with a manual. You are not a creature. Ma creatures need manual to function, like this iPad. But living beings don't need manual. They have their brain. Engage your brain. You married woman. Why did you marry? And what are you doing there? If something happened, you know what it's supposed to be, right? Think. So you stop thinking. Live humanly. Well then.